Today, we're going to graph the tangent and cotangent graphs. Those are our last two of the trig functions. So we graph sine and cosine first, cosecant and secant. All four of those had a period of 2 pi. Now we're going to focus on the tangent and cotangent. So we'll start by getting a table of values for it. And there's that unit circle again. Make sure that you know it. So here is our table. Our x values, we've picked some convenient ones here to have on our table so that we can go ahead and graph it. Remember that the tangent is the y value over the x value on that unit circle. So if we did negative pi, our y value would be 0, and our x value would be negative 1. And 0 divided by anything is 0. At negative 3 pi over 4, remember the ones with the 4 in the denominator, that's root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. This would be in the second quadrant, so they would both be negative. And so we get a positive 1. At negative pi over 2, we're looking at the 270 degrees. Um, so that is going to be a 1 over 0. And so that's undefined. We can't divide by 0. Here we get a negative 1, 0, 1, and then undefined. It's good to know that unit circle. All right, so we're going to go ahead and graph these points and see what happens. If you remember back from rationals, when we had an undefined, so we had that zero in the denominator created a vertical asymptote. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote everywhere it's undefined. In this case, that's negative pi over 2. And then we've got another one right here at pi over 2. Now for our points in between. At 0, we're at 0, so that gives me this point right here. At negative pi over 4, I'm at negative 1. So negative pi over 4, negative 1 gives me this point right here. A positive pi over 4, I get this point at 1. And so when I graph those, and our asymptotes guide our end behavior. So our, I'm going to get really close to the asymptote, and then it goes this way. And there's that asymptote. That's what our tangent graph looks like. It has a period of 1 pi because it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which is a distance of 1 pi. So the period here is going to be 1 pi. It tells us fundamental period, 1 pi. The amplitude does not, it doesn't have one. That's because our tangent graph goes all the way up and all the way down. And remember when we defined amplitude, amplitude it was from the middle to the top and the middle to the bottom. Since this goes up forever and down forever, then it has no amplitude. Now, our period is one pi. So every pi, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. And I'll have another one here. And then in the middle, it's going to be on that x-axis there. And it's going to take the same shape where it starts at the bottom there gets close to our asymptote, and then it crosses over this way. So that right there is three cycles of it, which we told you was acceptable for the test, as long as you can graph those three. But I'll go ahead and graph all the way to the end. So I'm going to have another vertical asymptote right here, because that's another pi distance. And then we've got another pi distance here. So we'll have two more cycles. There we go. All right, so our vertical asymptote. Vertical lines are x equals. So that's going to be an x equals there. Our first one is right here at pi over 2. And so I'm going to get pi over 2 plus, we said every pi distance, we've got another vertical asymptote. So this would be n pi. That n stands for all our whole numbers here. So if I plug in 0, then I would have one at pi over 2. If I plug in 1, it would be pi over 2 plus the pi, which gives me this next one here, the pi over 2 plus pi. If I plugged in 2 here, it would be pi over 2 plus 2 pi, which gives me the next one, and so on. That's going to give me all of my vertical asymptotes. So our domain, as we're moving on this tangent graph, it jumps over that asymptote each time. So we can say our domain is all real numbers except for these asymptotes. So we do pi over 2 plus n pi. 
Now our range, it's going all the way down and all the way up. So that's going to be all real numbers. So negative infinity to infinity. And that's our parent function for the tangent. Now let's look at our cotangent. So for the cotangent here, again, we're going to do the table of values. But if you remember cotangent, that is x over y. It's our reciprocal of our tangent. And so that's going to flip there. I'm going to go ahead and fill out the table. Again, you want to know that unit circle. That's where we're getting those from. We're taking our values from the unit circle, and we're putting our x values over our y. So at negative 5, that's undefined, since it's going to have the 0 in the denominator. And then we've got 1, 0, negative 1, undefined, because again, at the 0 mark, our y value is 0. <clears throat> and then 1 and 0. And so we're going to graph what we've got here. At zero, it's undefined, so I'm going to have our first vertical asymptote right here at zero. The next vertical asymptote is at negative pi. So again, I've got a period of one pi because the distance from here to here is one pi. So, <laughs> and that's one full cycle. So it tells us here that the period is pi. Again, there's no amplitude since it goes up and down forever. And in this case, again, right in the center is going to be our, um, in the center of these two vertical asymptotes is going to be the point where it crosses right here. In this case, negative pi over 4 is at negative 1. So negative pi over 4 is negative 1 is right here. And then on this side, it's going to be here. And so we get a graph that starts at the top and then moves down as it goes to the right. So it's flipped from the tangent. So it's the flipped of the tangent. Um, it starts from the top and goes down. The tangent starts at the bottom and goes up. All right. So let's keep looking at some of the other differences here. Notice that our vertical asymptotes, and we said the period is still one pi, so I'm going to go ahead and put every pi is going to have that vertical asymptote. And in the center is going to be my point right there. That's what we're looking for when we take um, when we test. We're going to make sure that those asymptotes are in the correct location and that that middle point is in the correct location. And then in the it's going the correct direction. So middle starts at the top moves down, starts at the top, moves down. And I could do half on this one. It won't make it all the way to the end. All right, for our vertical asymptotes, again, it's x equals because vertical lines are x equals. The first one is at 0. So I could put 0 plus here, but it's not necessary. And then every pi after that, so that would be n pi. So now x equals n pi is going to give me every single vertical asymptote. When we write our domain, it would be all real numbers except for those points. And our range is from negative infinity to positive infinity since it goes all the way down and all the way up. All right, so now we've been introduced to both parent functions, our tangent and our cotangent. So every time we get introduced to the parent functions, we transform them. So let's look at some with transformations. This first one that we're going to try is the tangent, and it has a 2 in the place of b. Remember, in the inside part here, that's our b value. Just like with the cosine and the sine, that's going to affect the period. So let's start by writing our transformational form up here for the tangent. That is a tangent b times x minus c plus d. You should be really familiar with those transformations at this point. All right. For our amplitude, we said tangent does not have an amplitude. So your answer would be none if it asked for that. Cosine and sine are the only ones that have amplitude. The period in this case, our parent function for tangent is pi. That since there's a 2 here, we take that pi and we divide by 2. So the period is going to be a half a pi. That means within a half a pi, we're going to have a complete cycle. 
this has no shifts since there's nothing else with the X, there's nothing being added or subtracted and nothing up and down here. So this one has no shifts. All right, for the asymptotes, they're kind of a little bit tricky on these. So what we wanna do is take what's here and set it equal to the original. Um, so for tangent, we've got two X here. So I'm gonna take that two X and I'm gonna set it equal to the original asymptotes from the parent function. And so our original asymptotes from the parent function is negative pi over two and pi over two. So I start with that one. I divide by two. Remember with fractions, we keep change flip. So that's gonna give me x equals negative pi over four. When I flip this two, I get one over two and two times two is four. Then I take that two X and I set it equal to my positive pi over two, which is the other original. Just to remind you, that's these two right here. My first two asymptotes. So I set it equal to each one of those and then I solve. Those are going to be my two new asymptotes. So that's where I would start graphing. I graph my first asymptote at negative pi over four. If you're good at fractions, this is gonna be a little bit easier because that's a fourth of a pi that you're looking for there. So that's a fourth of a pi, negative and positive. That's how big mine's gonna, um, my cycle's going to be. I take the point right in the middle of that and that's gonna be where it crosses the x-axis. So in between these, that's gonna be at zero, zero there. My tangent starts from the bottom and goes to the top. There's one full cycle of our tangent graph. Um, you would continue this since we know that the um, period is pi over two. And if you want to look at this, pi over two is three tick marks. That's probably the easiest way to do it. On this particular graph, pi over two is three tick marks. So I know every three tick marks, I'm gonna have another asymptote. And then one, two, three, and another asymptote. One, two, three, and another asymptote. Then I go in the middle of those two asymptotes. I start from the bottom and I move towards the top. I allow those asymptotes to guide my end behavior because that's what it does. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and do all of these so you can see the final graph. All right, so there they all are. The important part is getting that first one Once you have that first one, then you can keep going with the rest of them because it's just a repetition. All right, so our asymptotes, x is equal to pi over four, there's my first one, plus n times pi over two. That means this is my first one, pi over four, and then every half of a pi, I'm going to have another one. That's what this represents here. And so our domain would be all real numbers except for those. And our range is all real numbers. All right, let's try a cotangent one. All right, so this one's got two transformations here. We've got one where it is a right movement. That's what that minus there stands for. So this is gonna be right. And then we've got that plus three at the end, which is up. So right two pi over three and up three. There's my shifts. It has not changed the period. So I'm gonna leave that as pi. Since there's no B value here, it stays as the original from the parent function. And there's no amplitude. Now we're ready to start graphing this. Again, with the tangent and cotangent, the easiest way to find those asymptotes is to set it equal to the original. So my original one for the cotangent is zero. So I'm gonna take this part right here and I'm gonna set it equal to zero. So I get X minus two pi over three is equal to zero. I add the two pi over three, so I get X equals two pi over three. So at two thirds of a pi, that's gonna be my first asymptote. If you notice that pi here is six tick marks, then two thirds of that would be four. So one, two, three, four, that's gonna be my first asymptote. 
That's two thirds of a pi right there. Then my period is pi. And we said pi is six, so I would just have to go six more. And then six. And every six, I'm gonna do another one because that is a distance of one pi. Once I have all of my asymptotes, now I'm going to focus on this up three. So instead of being right in the middle of these two asymptotes on the x-axis, it's gonna be right on the middle, but up three. So my value would go right here. Now that I have all those points, I remember the cotangent starts at the top and then it moves to, as it goes to the right, it goes down. So I'm gonna start by this asymptote here, go into that point and then move towards my asymptote. Got a little carried away there with the paper. Sorry about that. All right. So for our asymptotes, x is equal to, I take my very first one, which we found to be at 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write that one, 2 pi over 3. My period is pi, so I'm going to say plus n pi. My range is negative infinity to infinity, and my domain would be all real numbers except for our vertical asymptotes. So that's graphing our cotangent and tangent graphs.